My dearly beloved in Christ, we follow tonight and these early moments of the morning of Easter Sunday a very ancient custom where the Christians would, to celebrate the resurrection, would make a vigil beginning at dark on Holy Saturday evening and spend hours in the church. The catechumens would be baptized after the Easter water was blessed and there were the various ceremonies that we still observe with the fire and the candle and so forth, the ceremonies of the Easter vigil. And we give the first moments of the day of Easter Sunday, that most important feast to Almighty God in the church, celebrating calling to mind the resurrection of our Lord. What joy this feast ought to bring us and does bring to those who have spent Lent well, who have prepared well for the glorious feast of Easter. And we might say that this feast is a sort of representation of our entire lives as Catholics. Because those who are devoted to God, to their faith, experience joy. Really, we could say the happiest people on earth are faithful Catholics. Just as we also could say that some of the most unhappy people are Catholics who are not practicing their faith. St. Paul, in today's epistle to the Colossians, tells us really what the message of Easter is all about. He says, you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Now, what does he mean by that? You are dead. Well, we are not dead. But what does he mean addressing these early Christians in Colossus? You are dead. Just as a dead man, a dead a corpse, has no interest in this world any longer, the soul has passed into the next life. And there is no longer any care for the things of this world. So that's how we are supposed to be as good Christians. To die to the vanity and the, the glories, the things of this world, and the goals and esteem that that people have for the things of this world. We look at it and we say that's so empty. We think about how many people are running around doing this and that and living their lives and become so preoccupied with the things of this world and making money and experiencing worldly pleasure. And we want to die to all that. We want to be alive to the spiritual things. And that's what St. Paul says, you are, dead, you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. And before that he said, mind the things that are above, not the things that are upon this earth. We should especially at this holy season remember what really matters. And that is getting to heaven being with God for all eternity. Many things in this life are somewhat important. Many things in this life that we have to take care of are necessary. They are duties, obligations. But only one thing is supremely important, and that is the salvation of our immortal souls. It may be that the false pope of the new church, of the Vatican II church, says there is no hell, but we know there very much is a hell, and many souls go there every day. And we also know that God put us on this earth for only one purpose, and that is to escape hell, to save our immortal souls, not to deserve that we be separated from God in that lake of fire for all eternity but to deserve to be with him by how we live. So it all boils down to living as good Christians, letting our faith permeate our lives, everything we do, 
our thoughts, our, our decision-making, everything that, that we are about must be affected by our Catholic faith. The resurrection of our Lord is par excellence, the mystery of faith, because it is the foundation of our Catholic faith. Let me read to you a few words from a meditation book on the significance of the Feast of Easter. O holy Feast of Easter, how dear thou art to me. The resurrection of my Savior is a guarantee to me of his divinity and is thereby the complete guarantee of all my beliefs. For if Jesus Christ be God, his religion is divine. The Gospels, which is his word, is divine. The sacraments, which he has established, are divine. The church, which he has founded, is divine. And believing it, I am certain of not deceiving myself. In following my faith, I am therefore following an infallible guide, and in making the sacrifices it demands from me, I know that I do not lose my pains and that God will recompense me. So it is a mystery of faith. It is the foundation of our faith, and it is an opportunity for us to give thanks to God for our faith and all of the illumination that our faith brings to us. Because our faith does that, it illuminates, it shines the light on everything in this life to help us understand why, what it is about. How many people there are who are confused, who are searching for answers, and the world cannot give them answers. And their friends, who likely are not true friends, do not give them answers. And so they go around with this confusion and wandering about in darkness, wondering, what is life about? What is the purpose of life? But we know why God created us. We know what we are destined for. And let us remember that, as I said earlier, the happiest souls are those Catholics who are embracing their faith, living their faith, loving their faith whereas the saddest are those who fail to live it, fail to realize what a blessing they have, and fail to make the sacrifices necessary to serve God, to be faithful to his commandments. Let us remember that these sacrifices of trampling the world underfoot, renouncing the temptations of the devil and of the world and of our fallen human nature, those sacrifices bring joy and happiness, and they help us achieve the goal for which Almighty God created us. May we all rise with Christ one day and be with him forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.